Okay. Here we are at the mid, midweek teach, Paradise Now Church in Brisbane. We're in the New Testament today, reading from the New Testament today. Writings of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men. To be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, on the streets, that they may be seen by men Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father, who is in the secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you asked him. In this manner therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Verse 14, Matthew sings, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I think that's fair enough, isn't it? If we don't forgive our fellow man their sins, uh, if they've sinned against us, of course we automatically forgive those in the street. But if it's a brother or a sister, we forgive them once they repent. We know that the scriptures are clear on that. If we go to Colossians 3.13, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. As Christ forgave you, you must do. How did Christ forgive you, Christ forgave me by me repenting. 
Christ didn't forgive me any other way. When I repented, Christ forgave me. There has to be repentance inside the house of the Lord. And let me add, don't judge anyone inside the house of the Lord until you have sorted out your own life and you've rid yourself of your known sin. And don't judge anyone in the street. Anyway, um, our subject matter today is about giving and um, good deeds and charitable deeds. And so the key verse will be um, Matthew 6. <clears throat> and verse 3, but when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be, verse 4, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and then Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly, and that's a that's a, a um, very humble thing, isn't it? Not wanting the glory of men and women. The, the praises of men and women only last for a very little time. And the rewards of men and women are very small compared to the rewards of Father in heaven, the ancient of days. We know God is very generous, very, very generous God. So, you know, most prefer the way of the hypocrite um, in today's world, for sure. Another sign of the times, isn't it? As the days go by, things magnify him and uh, lawlessness will increase as the days go by and uh, the love of many towards Jesus will grow cold and people will uh, come to take the attitude that Jesus is either a myth or Jesus is um, retired or Jesus doesn't care or uh, humanity seem to like to do things their way and if God doesn't want to do it their way, well, they move on. But we need to humble ourselves and ask ourselves, what, 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 does, uh, what does Jesus say? How does he want things done? And when we do things the Lord's way, uh, there's far greater outcome for everyone. There's a far greater benefit for everyone. Well... There's a lot of do-nots here, isn't there? Starting from Matthew 6, 1. Uh, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by men. Otherwise you have no reward. It's the wrong attitude, isn't it? That's the title of our message today, the Pharisee Mindset. The Pharisee mindset. Jesus. This is all red writing we read today in these verses. Every single piece, every line, red writing from Matthew 6, 1 to 15. Express. Express words of Jesus. So we must listen up seriously. 
Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by men. And a lot of people, you know, they like that. It, it, it's not the it's not the Christos attitude. It's a Pharisee mindset. All these individual things here, got the charity and good deeds and praying and all these uh, do nots and don't be like the Pharisees and don't be like the the hypocrite. Don't be like the heathen. The Pharisee is numbered with the heathen and the hypocrite. And uh, we know that in verse 7, Matthew 6, 7, when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. I mean, even in the giving of prayer, the giving uh, not just of deeds and finances, but in the giving of prayer, uh, in these things, he said that the, these heathens, I believe the Lord's calling the Roman Catholics uh, no better than heathens. They think that uh, many and much and big is God. God's going to hear it because we're making a big noise and we're saying a lot of things. No, that's not the case. We see it clearly here, Jesus speaking. Repetition, that's the way of the Roman Catholic prayer, isn't it? Three Hail Marys, 42 Josephs and 18 um, Methuselahs or whatever. Repetition. It's an insult to the Lord. Going over the same old ground. It's like going over repetitious doing the same sin. The Lord doesn't approve of that. Hey? The Pharisee mindset, it's hierarchy, ease, high-mindedness, boastful, proud, but the mindset of Jesus, lowly, humble, hardship, contrary to the Adamic thinking, in one way, the Pharisee mindset is um, birthed out of uh, the Adamic. Because in the Adamic um, realm, we go back to Adam and Eve, uh, especially Eve, she wanted to be someone she wanted to be like God and she wanted to be wise and um, it was a self thing, wasn't it? Like self always gets in the road of Jesus' commands and Jesus' way. It's the big problem. All the way along, Jesus proved that even in Gethsemane, when Jesus said, Father, is there another way? He was wanting another way. That was the man, Jesus, crying out there. It wasn't the deity. It was man 
self. And then Father gave him the silent treatment and he said, he said, all right, then better still, Father, your will, not mine. So, when you, when you see church leaders and supposed Christian ministries around the world, when you see, you see them blurting out their, um, on their humanistic trumpets, that, oh, we just gave this and we just gave that, and displaying footage of what they did. Uh, for the hungry or the, the thirsting, did for the poor and the abandoned or the needy. You know they're in the flesh. Hey? You know they're in the flesh. It's a Pharisee mindset. It's disobedience. The Lord said not to make a big noise. The Lord doesn't want us making a big noise. He wants us to be humble. Humble is powerful. It takes you back, doesn't it? In this day and age, when you come across a humble person, it's a beautiful um, time. Hard to find humble people. Matthew 6, verse 2, Therefore when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as a hypocrite, as, as the hypocrites do, in the synagogue in the street and they may that they may have glory for men that little bit of glory for men robs them of the heavenly reward that small moment of glory sounding the trumpet there And Jesus put it under the heading of, of hypocrites. Right? It's a hypocritical thing. But when we do the charitable deed, keep it quiet. But uh, it's that, uh, that Pharisee mindset That boastful, proud, that, like the old devil, he was so proud, wasn't he? He got tired of serving and then he wanted to take over, become proud, wanted to be seen. When we can get rid of that, God can start to do things. with us, through us, for us. When we humble ourselves. And Job, the prophet Job was very much humbled on the ash heap. <laughs> but he, old Job got the double blessing. Oh, I got to laugh to myself about Job. What Job went through? Ah, oh, look. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all these bikies and supposed tough nuts and chopper reeds and jailhouse rockers? Could you imagine them going through what Job went through? They wouldn't be able to do it. They wouldn't hack it. Old Job, eh? Oh, what a man. He humbly sat on that ash heap. And even his helpmate, his wife was looking down her nostrils at him, calling him a loser. And 
But he, st- he, he, he stood his post. He hung in there, didn't he? And the double blessing was given to my servant Job, God's man, my servant Job. As a, a great example of humbling and um, letting the Lord have his way, sitting in silence, hey? Jesus, he said, don't do it, didn't he? All the way through. And when you do a charitable deed, do not, and do not, do not. Matthew 6, 3, when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That's the extremity of the deed. The left hand's not knowing what the right hand, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty, uh, pretty strong words. The left hand doesn't know, the right hand. Boy, oh boy, eh? And he just cancelled out all the tax returns, eh? Or he'd give an offering to the church or give an offering and it's tax deductible. <laughs> it's just man gone mad, isn't it? Gone wild. Religion gone wild. How can you do the tax deductible donation and gift when your left hand doesn't know what your right hand's done? So how would the tax man know? These church leaders lead people into unbelief, heathenism, hypocrisy, and Pharisee mindset, because they're Pharisees. They're Pharisees, they're lovers of money. They're not lovers of God, they're lovers of money. Or oh, it's tax, de- tax deductible. That What they did is, they, they, they robbed those people of their blessing from the Almighty just to get their way. See, self is in there, that Pharisee mindset. Hierarchy, ease, high-mindedness, boastfulness, proud, pride. Hey? It's all about self. Self gets in the road of Jesus. The Lord can't do his thing. It's a beautiful thing when the Lord does his thing. And Eve, she got the first do not, didn't she? Don't touch the fruit. And what did she do? And she stuffed it all up for everyone. And Adam Adam followed like a little puppy dog, little little Adam the Ahab. I mean, but who really cares? Who cares what Jesus said? Really? At the end of the day. Right? When you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And you claim your you're offering back on your tax, double dipping, see, greed, greed. Jesus obviously in, in, isn't cutting the mustard, is he? He's not giving any re- returns the way that people want it, monetary. Matthew 6, 4, you, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and Father, who sees in secret, will, him, will himself reward you openly. Eh? Will himself reward you openly. 
What do you think of that? We had a brother recently contributed to the ministry. It was a great help with a um, MacBook computer, great computer too. But he done it secretly. He he didn't want no praise. Done it quietly. But I was led to um, share it with people. And uh, it wasn't him that done that. It wasn't him blowing his own trumpet at all. But the Lord made it open. The Lord opened it up. But that's not the reward, ultimate reward. Father will reward for that. You can't give a cup of water to any of the disciples of the Christ and not be rewarded. A cup of water, a glass of water. So, uh, Pharisee mindset. When we come to the Lord Jesus, uh, we're told to put on the mind of Christ. Hey? We're told to put on the mind of Christ. I like what it says in Matthew 6, 3. But when you do a charitable deed, Uh, says it in verse 2 also. When, when. It's a choice, isn't it? It's our choice. It's not a forced issue. When. When you do your charitable deed. When you do your charitable deed. So if you're going to do a charitable deed, when you do it, make sure you do it like this. Who cares what Jesus says? The attitude today, who's Jesus to tell me what to do? It's an unconverted mindset, isn't it? It's a Pharisee mindset. Pharisees weren't converted, they were unconverted. They were religious people. We, we know that these Orthodox, Evangelical, Pentecostal, they've got this Pharisee mind, mindset. It, it's, it's evident. They expose themselves with their Christmas garbage, Christmas festivals and... It really exposes a lot of things when you see church leaders promoting and doing the Christmas scene because Jesus never said to do that. They're just doing it off their own back. Jesus never said to do that. So why do it? Oh, we just, we, we just reckon that this would be good for him and, you know, no, it's not. It's about self. It's about money and it's about chalking up more members to their religious business. If you can get a few more in, is it really getting them into the kingdom? Do you lie to people to get them into the kingdom? You're bringing people uh, through false premise. You know, you're bringing people Supposed to be bringing people to the Lord, riding on a lie. There is no Christmas in the Bible. And they have all these celebrations because the heathens love it. They do Christmas. John Lennon does Christmas. And now that it's Christmas. And so it is Christmas. And what have you done? See the, the old good deeds thing. 
It's going to get them there. What have you done? It's, it's Christmas. What have you done? Well, yeah, they didn't obey the Lord. They just got that Pharisee mindset. They have all the displays and all the window stuff and... Now, I'll bring Jesus back into Christmas and put Jesus back into Christmas. <laughs> he never was in Christmas. Jesus got nothing to do with him. Huh? And closer to home, we got Easter coming up with the rabbits. The rabbit season's coming up. Another Pharisee mindset. People going down the road, uh, some parade with with a cross with a wheel on it, with a sad look on their face, loaded up with sin. And then when the parade's over, they park their cross, uh, put it back in the cupboard or whatever they do with it, put it in mothballs, and then they go back to their sin. Come on, it's Pharisee, it's heathen, it's it's blowing trumpets. It's it, 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 it's putting oneself under the spotlight, and you know, it, Jesus never asked us to do that. Jesus never said to do that. Jesus said, "Follow me." His disciples didn't do that. Jesus and uh, uh, disciples, I should say, Jesus' disciples, Peter and Paul and Jude, they didn't go down the street with a cross, with a wheel on it. No? They reckon Peter was hung upside down on a cross. <laughs> His head would have burst like a pimple with the blood pressure. Hey? It would have burst like a big old boil when you stick a pin in it. Fully ripened. Pump. Christmas, Easter. Tithing's another one. It, it, it's another Pharisee thing. It's another... It's another um, bring the money in job. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. Da 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 You know, it's obsolete. It, it's not New Testament. We don't see Jesus. We don't see Peter, Paul. We don't see these men, these apostolic, great apostolic men. Mentioning tithe. Oh, and Paul was in Athens collecting tithes. No, offerings. Not 10%. Offerings from the love of the hearts of the people who were so grateful to Jesus and to God for everything that they had. When you're born again, the lights come on and, and you see how blessed you are to have bread and water. This causes an eruption within the mindset and the heart region, which causes and, and, and enables and quickens people to contribute to the uh, message of the Lord Jesus and to the minister who brings the glad tidings of goodly things. And the people uphold the minister in love, esteem him highly for the work he does, for the saving of the souls and looking out for their souls that they may be presented a spotless bride.
without spot, blemish or wrinkle, presented perfect to Christ. Someone can say amen to that if they want to. But giving, like praying and, and serving, it, it's all done in the humble mode, in the selfless mode, you know, the biggest secret giver ever was and is God. The biggest secret giver ever is our Father. I mean, just have a look. Look at the joy. The joy people have People have great days, don't they? People talk of the great days. Had a great day at the beach. Had a great day at the barbecue. Man alive, the food. The fish, the grilled fish, the, the, the lovely steaks, the burgers. Oh, man, better at Hungry Jack's. When I was in New York with my wife, um... I used to hang down at the uh, hot dog stand there in Times Square. Man, they done chili dogs like no chili dogs could ever be done. They had the best chili dogs. You want a good chili dog? Go down to Times Square, New York City. And so, and the waffles, the waffles. My wife really liked the waffles and I liked the, the chili dogs. I'd have a couple of them for breakfast, you know. Uh, on my health diet, as usual, I'd have a couple of chili dogs and a can of Coke or something. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey? Dear, dear, dear. So enjoyable. And people say, oh, the beautiful wine. The beautiful wine, it, you know. It was great with the dinner. Um, or the gathering. Oh, what a great time, you know. It, you know, the, all the taste buds and the joy bells and everything is given secretly by God. They don't realise. God's allowing them to, to joy up and to have a great day and eat that lovely food and drink that lovely wine or whatever they drink, have that lovely cold drink with their chilli dog. God's giving that, ultimately. When anyone gives me anything, I appreciate it and I'm grateful for it because they must have had a soft heart for God to use them, but God ultimately gives through people. And that's a, isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that, that causes me to love God even more. It causes me to love Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit more and more and more and more and more. The, the scriptures say that the Lord knows. The Lord knows what, uh, what we need. Hey? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what 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 you eat and what you wear. And the Lord knows all the things we need. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these other things will be added to you. Not given to you all at once, but added to you. We, we need to get rid of that stinking Pharisee mindset and, and take on the mind of Christ. Get self out of the road. Respect what the Lord says. 
Let's do it the Lord's way, not our way. Let's not do the Frank Sinatra. With the I did it my way. We need to do it Jesus' way. The Pharisees, they, they said, but they did not do. The Pharisees were under the sin of omission, weren't they? And uh, the Lord, as we read in Matthew 7, 13, 14, there's only a few that do what Jesus says. It's throughout the world, I mean, per capita, of course. We're not looking at a dozen or, or, or 200. We're looking at millions, but going on uh, worldly figures, billions compared. Um, only few really do what Jesus says, what the Lord Jesus tells us to do. Few find the narrow gate. Now, in order to find the narrow gate, if you, if you find the narrow gate, then you can do, can't you? You can do it Jesus' way. But if you don't find the narrow gate, or, or the, the doctrine of the Christ, if you don't have it, how are you going to know? You, you're just going to be like those Roman Catholics and Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses. We're just going to be like the Baptists, doing all these things that Jesus never asked us to do. Grieving the Spirit of God. Adding to and taking away from the Word. And there's a lot of hypocrisy there and heathenism. Let me look at things like Christmas and Easter. There, there's heathenistic uh, connections there. And, and hypocritical. And all the giving is all blurted out everywhere. And I gave this to, what's the name, and here's your present. Oh, look, Bill's got a big present. He can't get it through the door. Oh, that's just me, you know. Hello. Jesus tells us not, not, not to have that mindset, you know, like the old Pharisees walking down the street and they've got a couple of books hanging off their forehead. <laughs> oh, what are they? Oh, that's just the... The Dead Sea Scrolls on the left, that's just ripping my eyebrow out on the left-hand side. And, well, the, the book on the right-hand side is, is the Maccabees of the Ontoreticus that just passes by, and that's just tearing me forward off. <laughs> you know how they used, the Pharisees had the frontlets, yeah? <laughs> Walking down the street with the gowns flowing, you know, the old Roman Catholic job. The Anglican, you know, the Aspinall mode. The Episcopal arrangement. Church of England job. Knocking on the door, you know. I never read that in the scriptures. Have you read that in the scriptures? Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Donk, donk, donk. And then someone comes in with their gown on and the big uh, shepherd's crook, right? I heard that bonk, bonk, bonk on the church door, on the cathedral door. And I'm waiting for knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Twice on the pipe if the answer is no. All this Pharisee religious showing in the flesh. It's a, they put up a good showing in the flesh, don't they? 
They put up a good showing in the flesh. But Jesus' way is the lowly saint. Humility. Sacrifice. Holiness. Yeah, so... It's always best that someone else praise you and exalt you. There's more power in it. You know, when someone else says something good about you, not you saying something good about you, when someone else says, and someone else exalts you, you don't have to bother. Right? You don't have to trouble yourself. They're just bonuses, really. If someone doesn't praise you and exalt you, it doesn't matter, does it? Who cares? You've done it for the Lord. We, we do it before the Lord, no matter what we do. We don't do it before men. We, we're not called to be eye servants. We do it before the Lord. We do it before the Lord and we rejoice in the Lord to have that opportunity and privilege to do it, whatever we're doing, whether, whether we're, we're giving, whether we're praying, whether we're um, preaching, teaching, we do it before the Lord. We're not there to man please, tickle ears. Uh, when we pray, I mean, I was always standoffish about all these public um, church meetings where everyone is praying there in, in, in the... Uh, everyone is praying there in the church and everyone's raising their voice and trying to outdo each other. When you read Matthew 6, 6, it says, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, then pray to Father, who's in the secret place. And then Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. He's even going to reward you for praying. <laughs> what a giver. The secret giver. Forever giving, he just gives us. He gives us the sun. Rises in the morning. Huh? He gives us the rain. When the rain comes down, we know that he's there. When the sun comes out, we know that he cares. He's the God of creation, the creator himself. He's Jesus, the friend of the poor. So let us be grateful and give thanks to him, the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, the one who is coming and the one who is here. He's Jesus, the friend of the poor. Right? He gives us everything. He gave me breath to get out of bed this morning. Ten years next month. I had my heart, heart attack ten years ago. Food poison from a Muslim kebab shop. Ten years. He gave me another decade. But the chief surgeon at the Royal Brisbane Hospital said, you won't have long to live if you, if you don't get on the medication, five statins, five pills for the rest of your life, and a tube in your heart. We'll put a nice little stent tube in your heart and everything will be jacked, you know, everything will be sweet. I said, no, mate, I don't, I don't have any witness about that. And there's three surgeons maybe a young intern and, and two of the big boys at the end of me bed. I said, look, I pulled out these 
tracks from under me pillow. I said, there you go, fellas. If I had to be laid in this bed to give you that, I would never have met you otherwise. I would never have met those surgeons otherwise. I said, if I had to be laid in this bed to give you these brochures that I wrote with my own hands, no bones, it's all meat, so be it. <laughs> hey, I told him, I, I said, clearly, I only take the gospel. I don't take any other pills. Decade next month. 2008, that was March 2008. Pretty sure it was March. Ten years. But they said I wouldn't live long. That's a decade. Look, 61 year old in June. The Lord, he's the giver. He, he's the one that give me the ability to walk out of that hospital. He's the one that... Give me breath today to preach this message. See, if I didn't live, I wouldn't be preaching this message and you wouldn't have heard this message. <laughs> you would have heard a lot of other messages, but you wouldn't have heard this message. This message is unique on its own. It has its own uniqueness. There's particular gems and treasures in this message that people are going to put in their treasury, in their jewelry, spiritual jewelry boxes, that's just going to have the joy bells ringing in their inner man, have them tapping their toes till the day they die. What a blessing, hey? Eh? And don't forget the computer that Brother Mike gave uh, only a week or so ago is going to be instrumental in getting this message to you. You see the way God is just so beautiful, God is so loving. He's so strategic. He's the strategist to end all strategists in the strategist realm. Right? Oh, glory to the Lamb. Hey? So we want to forsake that Pharisee mindset with the pride and the selfishness. I believe it's all according to the philosophies of men that what we read... Jesus said, do not, do not, do not. That's all got to do with the, the philosophies of men and women, of course. Colossians 2, 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world. And not according to Christ. See, these basic principles of the world, you know, with the blurting everything out and, and, and trumpeting, oh, look, I gave something, I did something, blah, blah, blah. Hey? This has all got to do with the basic principles of the world. This has all got to do with the Pharisee mindset. This is all empty deceit. This is all traditions, Christmas, Easter. They're all traditions of men. That's not a tradition of uh, the the church. Christmas and Easter is not a tradition of the church, the true church. And when you see people doing these things, you know they're in the flesh. You, you know they're just doing their own thing. They're selfish. They don't want to let go of their little religious tradition to please the Lord. You see, let me say this in a nutshell. Instead of doing Christmas, why don't we just exalt Jesus every day? <laughs> and instead of doing Easter, why don't we just die daily to our sin and live for Christ? Oh, no, we don't want to do that. We'd rather get the cross out with the wheel and go down the street and we can keep our sin then. Hey? We, can, we can do the 465 steps of, of, of the Via Dolorosa and go over the Philippines and bash ourselves stupid and have someone else beat us to a pulp thinking that we're doing God a favour. 
we can go to Mexico and do the same thing. Maybe get the black Nazarene out and have a bit of a hoedown and a hoodoo voodoo. Huh? Get some uh, food offered up to idols and get into that. Traditions of men. Philosophy. Huh? Men and men and women's thinking. It's not the Christ thing. Not the way the Christ sees things. We have to keep that in mind, right? At all times. Take that lowly seat. Let's go over to Luke twenty-one. Have a look there. This is very beautiful. Luke twenty-one. Verse 1, and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these, out of their abundance have put in offerings for God. But she, out of her poverty, put in all the livelihood that she had. I got to laugh. I got to smile. I got to rejoice. I I, got to shake my head. I'm hoping to meet this woman in heaven. I mean, that's just, Raw faith, isn't it? That's just selfless. Selfless act. Jesus said she put in more than everyone, more than all. The rich were putting their offerings in. And he, Jesus said you can add all that up And she put in more. She put in two copper coins or whatever. I don't know, bronze or whatever. But there weren't much. Two mites. Not quite sure what metal they're made out of, but two sounds... I always think of two pennies, copper coins. There wouldn't have been silver or gold, as far as I know, anyway. Hey... How wonderful. Well, we know she didn't have a Pharisee mindset. Eh? We know she wasn't high-minded and hierarchy-orientated. She wasn't into ease. She wasn't boastful and proud. But Jesus could see. Eh? Luke 21, 1, and Jesus, and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a poor widow putting in two mines. Hey? Oh, dear, dear, dear. And look at verse 5. Then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, these things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone will be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. You see that? They looked, didn't they, with their eyes, and they seen the, they seen the beautiful Roman Catholic cathedral. The days were coming, which not one stone. They seen the beautiful temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations. I'm sure, I'm sure, the Pharisees of today have the same arrangement. 
these beautiful uh, venues and beautiful churches and beautiful synagogues and temples. People travel the world to go to these beautiful cathedrals and uh, St. Peter's. They go over to Rome. And, but the Lord, I believe in general, says it's all going to come down anyway. The whole stinking lot is going to come down to the ground. The Lord's going to destroy all the works of men's and women's hands. As Peter said, he will consume it all with fire. And then what will be left? What will be left then? Only our relationship with Jesus. So what sort of relationship do we have with Jesus? Do we have a relationship with Jesus? Hey? Are we in love with Jesus? The Jewish king who hung on the tree for sin-ridden paupers of the earth? Hey, the king of kings travelling to the earth, another planet, to save sin-ridden, sin-plagued paupers. What do you think of that? Because the richest of the richest in this world is just a pauper compared to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You get all the richest people in the world and say, look, put all your coins in the one barrel. Hey? Put all your money into the barrel here. Look, is that going to compare with the streets of heaven? The streets are paved with gold. The new Jerusalem. Not the now Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. Paved with gold. And the gold is transparent. Now, all these rich in the world, billionaire, trillionaires, whatever they are, they're paupers. Sin-plagued paupers compared to my Jesus. <laughs> compared to Jesus the Christ. Hey, isn't that wonderful? Oh, hallelujah. I come, Father, please wait. Don't close that heavenly gate. Just to walk the new Jerusalem with you. I come, Father, I come. The road looks narrow and steep Oh, there's hardly room for my feet Just to walk the new Jerusalem with you I come, Father, I come I come, I'll not count the cost I'm ready to take up my cross Just to walk the new Jerusalem with you <laughs> I come, Father, I come I, We need to come home to Father We need to come home to Father, not some stinking Roman Catholic church. Come home to the Mother Church. Come home to... That's not scripture. God doesn't call people home to a, a Mother Church. Hey? That's not the Word of God. We come to the Father through Jesus. 
We must come home to Father through Jesus. No one comes to Father except through Jesus. No mention of coming home to a mother church. <laughs> uh, where there's this uh, eternal virgin with a crown on her head and this little baby that is eternally a baby. What demonic hogwash is that? Jesus ain't no baby. I'm going to finish up and show you who Jesus is. He's not some chubby bubby, I can tell you now. Revelation nineteen eleven. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Revelation nineteen thirteen. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white, clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's where I'll finish the message today. And I hope everyone enjoys what has been said here this morning. My name is Paul Sheehan. I have a little fellowship down in Yeronga, Brisbane. We have meetings every Sunday, 9 School Road, number 9 School Road, every Sunday, 10 a.m., lunch provided, good message, good spiritual food, good natural food, and Everyone is welcome. Come along and be blessed. Otherwise, get onto my website, www.fireandhammer.com, or you can go to our Facebook, JTCM Mission, or you can uh, go to uh, our YouTube, JUVY. Six seven nine. Wherever you go and whatever you do, uh, go in the strength of the Lord. And everyone said. And everyone said. Amen. Remember our message today: the Pharisee mindset. Have a wonderful day.